of the femur slightly shape the end of the residual limb in the lateral and posterior direction. Make sure that the contact area is formed by the lateral hand above the end of the bone on the posterior side. Place a four layer plaster splint, longette 20 cm width, around the residual limb to cast the level of the socket entrance. Make sure that the ischial tuberosity and the lateral socket brim are included. Place the longette on the hand circling the ramus and then shape it to the patient. Place the residual limb in the neutral position. Palpate the ischial tuberosity as shown earlier. Press the lateral hand below the trochanter major and simultaneously push the residual limb in the direction of the adductors. After the plaster bandages have hardened, the plaster model can be removed from the residual limb. Stabilize the posterior region and press the plaster cast flat in the front contact area. Mark the position of the trochanter major in the plaster cast. Marking the ischial tuberosity and the intersection point of the ischial ramus. The adductors are located here. Marking the areas to be modeled in the posterior, lateral and frontal area. Using a draw knife, reduce the circumference of the plaster model by one centimeter from the dimension measured on the patient in the posterior region up to four centimeter below the perineum. Enter the soft tissue above the trochanter major at a 15 degree angle to the surface of the femur and flatten the front contact surface further. Then smooth the modeled areas and rework the socket rim shape. Reduce the plaster in the medial socket area so that the protuberance starts approximately 3 centimeters below the perineum. 
Fill in the hollow resulting from plastering behind the ischial tuberosity accordingly. Then smooth the plaster model completely. Preparation for Vacuum Forming Prepare the plaster positive with a thin 99B25 Perlin stockinette prior to vacuum forming. Tie off the Perlin below the valve dummy. Then position the dummy to the ProSeal ring on the plaster model without applying too much pressure. Conventional method for vacuum forming the socket. Rework the dummy for the ProSeal ring in the valve without a rod. removing the dummy from the socket. Gluing the ProSeal ring into the socket with bonding agent, then check to ensure that the ring is positioned properly and correct if necessary. The patient can step into the socket without any donning aid. Checking the volume of the socket. Checking the lateral contact surface. Checking the position of the ischial tuberosity and the intersection point. 